Hi! Welcome to episode 61 of the Stress Knits podcast. I'm Stacy, also known as Stacy Elston on Instagram and Stress Knits on Ravelry. And today is May 12th, 2018. It's a really crappy, rainy, thunderstormy day. Um, I was planning on going to Ann Arbor. Esther just knocked over a bunch of my stuff. Uh, I was planning on going to Ann Arbor, Michigan today. I live in Northville, not too far. It's about a 30 minute drive, um, depending on traffic. So I was planning on going because Andrew Mowry is there today. And I've, I mean, I've loved her forever, but um, lately I've been kind of in an Andrea Mowry obsessed, um, mode. <laughs> so I, um, got ready, put on lipstick, which I almost never wear. I just started wearing it, um, recently because my pregnancy has made me feel like a whale. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so I got bangs and started wearing lipstick to make myself feel more like myself. So I put on my lipstick, put on my What the Fade shawl, which is my favorite thing I've ever knit. This is What the Fade by Andrew Mowry. It was a mystery knit along, um, brioche and garter. This is all out of uh, Stress Knits yarn. If you want the information, um, previous episodes and also my Ravelry page for it, I believe has everything you need to know. So, um, I was going to go meet her, but then it's really gross outside. I didn't want to leave Esther for too long. Esther is my pug puppy. <laughs> um, maybe she'll say hi later. But, um, I didn't want to leave her for too long, and she, she gets a little nervous about thunderstorms. We're about to have some big ones, and, um... Yeah, so, and I also get really nervous about meeting people that I really idolize. <laughs> it's so stupid, but her, with Andrew Mowry being from Michigan, um, I don't know, it's just, it's scary. Which is stupid, she's a person. <sighs> she's a nice person. <laughs> um, but, I don't know, I just kind of spooked myself out, so instead I decided to record a podcast. I wasn't going to record today because I feel kind of gross. Um, so like I said, I'm pregnant. And I had to do my three hour glucose test yesterday. So with the theme of my pregnancy, it sucked. <laughs> um, uh, having to do the three hour thing wasn't a shock to me just because both my sisters had to do it. And um, I just assumed because everything has been really hard that it would have to happen. What I did not anticipate is that I would throw up five minutes into the test and have to go home. So luckily Doug drove me because I was really dizzy and you know, I wasn't doing good. Doug's my husband. And um, yeah, so I <laughs> might have to try it again. But the thing, if you don't know about the three hour glucose test, you have to fast for at least 12 hours before, and then you drink the sugary drink, which is kind of like the one hour test, but it has twice the amount of sugar. So it's the equivalent of eating four candy bars on an empty stomach. And I don't do sweets very often, so I don't know. I, my stomach did not handle it very well. So I will be getting a call from them to see what we're gonna do. So, super fun. But yeah, I've been feeling, I was feeling really gross yesterday. I got home and I slept like all day after. And then today I'm kind of just kind of foggy is a good way to put it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so I decided not to go see Andrew Mowry and I'm kind of bummed, but also she's from Michigan so there are gonna be more opportunities to meet her. <laughs> so with that, um, I do have some stuff to show you. I have a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, yeah, I have my iced coffee. All right. Oh, so I have a finished object, which I'm super excited about. It is living in my fringe field bag, which has, so, okay, our apartment our air conditioning 
wasn't working. It's still not really working. Um, I've shocked them because it worked for like two days and then it stopped again. <laughs> but one of the days that it was like 87 degrees, um, it was about the same in here. And we have uh, our brush that we have for Esther has uh, like a squishy ergonomic handle and there was a hole in it and all of the liquid <laughs> in it came out and some of it got on my jacket and some of it got on my field bag. So it's just character. Um, I know these are really overrated and all of that jazz, but I really like them because they're sturdy and they do that. <laughs> I don't know, I just really love them and I like how minimalist they are because a lot of project bags are really busy and I just like a good sturdy canvas. So in here is my finished object. And so I finished my second baby sweater for our little girl. Still have to block it because I'm lazy. And our, my blocking room is the nursery <laughs> and we're starting to move everything out. We picked our paint color. It's this gorgeous, 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 dark, dark gray because all of our furniture is white. So it's a super dark gray, <laughs> but we're starting to move everything out. Um, I think we're painting Monday. Super excited. Um, yeah, so we're, I don't know, all the procrastination, procrastination about this nursery just because life. But um, yeah, that's where I usually block. And so I didn't feel like putting my blocking mat out again all that jazz because I'm gonna have to put it away. Don't eat my sock. She's fine. All right, so I finished my flax light. <laughs> this is the only awkward part about doing this on the floor is that I don't feel like I can show it. So this is the flax light by Tin Can Knits. Everybody knits this. Um, the only modification I made is that I didn't do the garter panel on the sleeve because I don't like it. I've knit many of these. I think this is my third or fourth? Third. Um, and I, I don't know, I've never knit the garter panel because I've never felt like it was necessary. Um, so yeah, this is going to grow this way because it's super wash merino, which is exactly what I want. Um, and our baby's measuring a little small, so I knit the body a little shorter than I have for other people, but also I'm a tiny, I'm really short, I'm barely 5'2", and here's the other side. <laughs> so this is out of Woolen Boone Buffy, it's my favorite colorway <laughs> from Woolen Boone. I could put this in everything. But it's just so little. I didn't knit the arms uh, full length. This will probably be bracelet or three quarters on her. Um, I just bound off and rib um, on the hem, but it's, it's fine. And then um, I did Jenny Surprisingly Stretchy on the cuffs, which is actually, I think this is the stretchiest this has ever been for me. I don't know. I really love it. <laughs> um, so the woolen boon on her classic boon base, I think. I think it's just 100% superwash merino. And there's a little bit of a ply to it. And I just really, I love this. It's just so sweet. I didn't think I was going to knit anything for a little lady, but I have two sweaters. I think that's all I'm gonna do for now. Um, I need to knit my soon to be nephew. Um, which is like a month away, um, but I'll talk about that later. So yeah, I have this and then, in case you missed it, because baby knits are just so cute, I also knit her, <laughs> I also knit her the baby, the newborn vertebrae. So it's really funny though, because I, I mean, pink's my favorite color, <laughs> but I never thought I would knit a bunch of pink stuff if I was having a girl. I always thought it would just be like grays. I can't help it. I have, well, I do have a lot of pink yarn in my stash. <laughs> That's the majority because I buy what I like. 
and um, I'm going to talk about stash later, but I just had these in my stash and I had to. So I'll probably also knit her a gray sweater. But yeah. So our little babe has two sweaters, so that's really exciting. And then for works in progress, I've been working on two things. One I showed last week, Hermione's Everyday Sock. This was done last time. And then here is the second. This is knit out of Stress Knits yarn in the Sweet Stress Folk colorway, which I have not released yet. It was special for Jacqueline, Julie, and I at Rhinebeck, but when I open the shop, hopefully June, end of May, early June, so I can do one or two updates before I have the baby. Um, see what happens and how I'm feeling <laughs> but this will be a colorway that's in the shop it's a blush with chartreuse and mint because those are our colors <sighs> I just I love it I'm knitting them on Licka needles size ones so there's that in my sugar tot uh, progress keeper here's the cake I love this, um, but I just, I don't have a lot of sock mojo right now. Um, I don't know why, I don't know, but last week I brought that sock to church and that's pretty much what I did on. So, I don't know. Um, lipstick all over my straw. Did you guys know that Starbucks came out with strawless lids it's so cool but my store hasn't been putting them on them yet so that's really exciting i love straws but they're so bad <laughs> okay i feel like i'm all over the place but you don't come here for a put together person let's be honest come here for the hot mess okay so i have one more thing on the needles and that is something that you haven't seen in a long time. And I mean, granted, I didn't podcast since like December, but you haven't seen it in a really long time. So I wanted to knit on something kind of mindless, but was also in a really weird construction and I got to play with some color. So I picked up my eyeball shawl. So it's living in my other fringe bag. Um, this is my OG fringe bag that Doug bought me on our honeymoon at Pearl Soho, so this is really, really special. And I have uh, some of my favorite, some of my favorite ladies. <sighs> yeah, I just love it. So <laughs> living in that, it's my eyeball shawl by Stephen West. And originally when I saw this, I hated it. Um... I thought it was really stupid to have a shawl shaped like an eyeball. Then I saw a bunch of people knit it and I saw a bunch of people wear it. And I liked how it showed off hand dyed yarn. So since I am um, having a baby and I had to quit my job for medical reasons, don't take it to carpet. Um, had to quit my job for medical reasons. I decided with Doug's full support that I would stay at home with the baby. Um, yeah, I need to rewrap this <laughs> because it's driving me nuts. So we decided that I was gonna stay home with the baby. Actually, I decided, because he didn't want to ask me to do that, but um, it just made the most sense for us. So, um, so I decided I was gonna stay home with the baby and I'm really, really excited about it because <laughs> I'm just really excited about it but because I am who I am um, I need to do something so I'm going to continue stress in its yarn as my full-time career until I choose to do something else so I'm really excited and um, hopefully within the next year or so I can start doing trunk shows and stuff like that so I really wanted to knit something that showcased my yarn in a really fun way and um yeah 
So that's why I cast this on. And I'm loving it. So last time you saw this, I just had the um, pupil and the iris, but I started adding the whites of the eyes. So I'm in the middle. I mean, I'm on, I'm building the uh, whites of the eyes. So here, that part, and then it's blowing out the whites of the eyes. So I finished side one. I think it's called the Scalera. Um, side one in three days. Not too bad. Um, it's a lot of stitches at the end. So there's that. And then I'm building the other side right now. So this is where I'm at. Probably going to work on this today. I don't know. But this is all out of my hand dyed yarn, which is Stress Knits. The pupil is in etchings in my singles base. Which I, I think it's just such a pretty tonal gray. Love it. The iris is in my solstice colorway on my sparkle base, and it's very true to color. It's like a light blue that has a slight hint of mint to it, but not really, with a burst of um, like a poppy color and yellow. And then my new obsession, <laughs> which I didn't know would be my obsession, um, is my birch colorway, which I love and I've always loved. But in garter stitch, there's just something about it. And this is on my smooth sock base, which, or my smooth base, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And there's just something about this in garter on a US 5 <laughs> that is just giving me all of the feelings. So, no. I do have to dye up another skein of this because all I have left is this little nugget. I knew I was going to have to, but yeah, so there's that. Um, I'm really loving it. It's a pattern by Stephen West. I don't know. It's fun. It's fun. And then there's a brioche border and an eye cord bind off after this. And I've been craving brioche, so there is the eyeball shawl. So everybody's allergies going nuts because yikes also apparently when you're pregnant you get really stuffy I don't know. Uh, but here is solstice in the cake which is I love this colorway um, and then my etchings colorway so there is that what else do I want to talk about. I have show notes for the first time in a long time. Um, so I have two future cast-ons. One of them I talked about briefly. So my sister is also pregnant. My middle sister, too older. And she's having a little boy. I'm super excited to meet him next month. And um, I need to knit his sweater. I do. So I pulled out my skein of Madeline Tosh, Tosh Vintage, I think, in the kitten colorway. It's this beautiful gray brown, which I think will be super, super cute. I'm thinking about knitting the Gramps cardigan. This also just might be a flax sweater, but the worsted weight version. Um, and I'll make it in like a one year size so you can wear it when it's colder. Um, so I'd rather the sweater be too big for him in the winter than too small and him miss his window to wear it so probably 6 to 12 month size I don't know but I really love this and it's super soft yeah. so I think this will be a good sweater and it's been languishing in my stash for a really long time because I was going to knit a hat out of it and I just never did so that is my future cast on number one Second, I didn't think, okay, so I've been in protest of knitting sweaters right now because um, I'm pregnant and I don't know when I'm going to be 
I don't know what size I'm gonna be afterwards. I don't know how long it's going to take to get to a size where like I'm used to being. So um, I've been like, I'm not knitting sweaters because I want them to fit. I think I might break that. Everybody's Knitting the Tenya Sweater by Caitlin Hunter of Boylan Knitworks and <laughs> think I have to cast on. I um, was packaging up a bunch of yarn to ship, which has shipped, so it should be to you guys next week or the week after, depending on where you're at. My um, post office is really small, so they tend to uh, take their time with shipping, so it might not go out until Monday, but it's there. <laughs> um, they have issues with scanning things the day that it gets dropped off. So, um, I, while I was packaging up things, I noticed three skeins of my pillow mint colorway. It's blown out a little bit. It's, ah, that's color accurate. Um, yeah. And it's on my squishy base, which is my 80% brush merino, 20% nylon, not 20, 80% uh, super brush merino, 10% nylon, 10% cashmere. And I love this base. Love this color. It came out a little bit brighter than it usually does. Um, usually, let's see. Usually it's a little more muted, but I've just been really craving mint in my life because I've been doing a lot of pink and they're my two favorite colors. So I think I'm going to cast on a Tenya in this. I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's a little out of my comfort zone for my wardrobe. I'm pretty neutral plus like dark blues and um, like my mauvey pinks. It's really all I wear, but I don't know. Does this go <laughs> with my skin tone? Does it? I think it goes well with my hair. I don't know. So this will be on my mind for a little bit before I cast it on. I won't cast it on until my sister's baby sweaters off the needles though because I need to knit that so that they have it. I have it when I go meet him. But I love this color. I've just been really obsessed with mint lately. So that might be a Tenya. I don't know. We'll see. Um, and speaking of being obsessed with mint and just yarn in general, which feels really good because I had a severe aversion to yarn while I was in pregnant, well, earlier pregnancy. Um, I'm 29 weeks now and I feel back to my normal self, which is weird because usually third trimester people start feeling gross again. Um, so far so good, <laughs> but I felt like human trash my first and second trimester and the second is supposed to be the good one and it was just as bad if not worse than the first trimester. So I am hoping that because <laughs> everything was so bad that the third trimester is really good. I hope. Um, yeah, but I had a severe version of yarn, which was fine <laughs> because I didn't want to buy yarn. I haven't bought yarn since end of November, beginning of December, like that week, <laughs> which is insanity. Um, it's really exciting. Haven't broken it yet. We'll see. <laughs> I almost broke it today. If I would have gone to Spun Ann Arbor, I would have bought some Primrose Yarn Company because I have a little bit of an obsession right now and they wholesale. That's fun. So I 
I've just been dream buying yarn. And so it was this yarn diet that happened without knowing that it happened. Um, and I'm starting to really get the itch to buy things. And I've been seeing a lot of my favorite dyers come out with new colorways or colorways that they came out with when I was like incapacitated. Um, so speaking of Primrose, I have a love for this colorway just because of Jacqueline of Brooklyn Knit Folk. She put it in her What the Fade and she put it in the baby's letter that she knit me. <laughs> I, ugh, Jacqueline, I cry every time I think about it or every time I see the picture or what you talked about in the podcast, just bawling. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, but the primrose that she put in there is called In Between the Lines, and I have been scouring for that colorway um, for about the past week. She had an update today. It wasn't in there, which is fine. Um... Kelsey of Primrose is super busy and wonderful and I just love her as a person and I love her business and the way that she operates and so I really want to support her. I bought my first yarn from her at Rhinebeck and I got to meet her briefly at Rhinebeck and I wish I got to talk to her and be less nervous in front of her and tell her how much I like appreciate what she does but um, I got nervous. So I'm gonna stock some Primrose stashes and all that good stuff and then my lovely friend Julie of Sweet Sparrow one all of her colorways are gorgeous it's all up my alley I have quite a few skeins in my stash that I really need to knit um, lately I've been itching to cast on my skein of strawberry swing because it's gorgeous so I've been itching to cast that on I might soon but <laughs> Um, she has a new-ish colorway. It's been out for a little bit, but it's called Wrapped Up in Books. <sighs> Julie, 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 Julie. I, it's sitting in my cart on Etsy. Let's put it that way. But I can't decide what base I want it on. That's really all it's stopping me. So that's probably going to be the skin that breaks my iron diet, if we're being honest with ourselves. Which is fine. <laughs> Because Doug's also surprised I haven't bought yarn in that long. So, we'll see what happens. But, the one that's breaking me. And the reason it's breaking me, because I, I would have purchased it immediately. But, the lovely Kemper of Junk Yarn came out with an exclusive colorway for a yarn store in uh, Berkeley, California. And it's called Martha. And it's this perfect jadeite mint with the most perfect corally orange speckles. And I love it. But it's an exclusive. <laughs> I've, um, I've dialed the yarn shop's number about 10 times. But I'm too afraid to call and ask them if they ship. Because <laughs> I have a problem. Are you eating my yarn? Are you eating my yarn? Oh, Esther, say hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> say hi. <laughs> um, yeah. So, those are like the three colorways that I'm really obsessed with right now, but I mean, I'm also... I'm also just craving color sometimes. Sometimes I like to go out of my comfort zone, and my comfort zone is this. It's this. And gray. And that's my comfort zone. But I'm kind of craving brighter colors because I just feel really good. And um, yellow is making me happy lately, which is really weird because I don't really like yellow. <sighs> yeah. I don't know. Um, but like... So the hedgehog colorways are really calling to me, like, I don't know why, but I, I really love Bollywood. It's a red, and I would never knit anything in it, but I keep thinking about buying a mini, just so I have it and put it in my blanket. Um, 
And that's so Bollywood. I've loved Fly for a really long time. <laughs> Esther, baby. Hey. Don't. <laughs> um. Um, yeah, I, so I've loved Fly for a really long time, and, um, Poppy, I don't know why I really love these colorways right now, but I really do. Like the egg yolk colorway by Hedgehog, like that yellow. I don't like yellow, but I really do right now, so, um, We'll see what happens. We'll see what breaks the yarn budget. Break, not the budget, the yarn diet. Because I've gone. So I'm going to say, because the last skin I bought was Volenvine in the Dead Calm colorway. Which I don't know where it's at. Because when I got it, I immediately started feeling sick and I opened the package and I like had the severe version to it. <laughs> Fallen Vine's my favorite yarn in the entire world. It's my ride or die. And I like got sick to my stomach looking at it, so I put it somewhere. <laughs> no idea where it's at. So that's the last can I bought, and I bought that in at the end of November, but it came beginning of December. So December, January, February, March, April, May. I haven't bought yarn in six months. What? <sighs> Feels really weird. And I've been de-stashing and giving stuff away. I only have... I have my sweater quantities, which is the Volenvine Doug got me for my birthday two years ago. <laughs> um, and Gashley Crumb. Um, I have a sweater quantity of O Wool O Wash Fingering in the Oyster Mushroom colorway, I think. And... Um, I bought yarn to make a color work sweater. I think it's gonna be the Damyak Lopa because I really wanna learn how to steak. Um, but it's Quince and Company and it's gorgeous. So I have that. And then I have maybe 12 skeins of yarn and that's my stash right now. Because again, <laughs> that's gonna be our nursery. So I have to move all that out. Don't eat a book. Thank you. Um, yeah. So, I have an itch to buy yarn. And it also doesn't help that my other thing that I'm just like on a kick on is Andrea Mowry in general. <laughs> Which, it's killing me that I'm not there right now. It's fine. So, I've listened to podcasts with her. I've watched her interviews. I don't know why. I've just felt really inspired by her lately. I don't know what it is. Um, yeah, I don't know. But I just am really enjoying her. So I have quite a few patterns of hers that I really, really, really want to cast on, but I'm not sure what I would knit them out of. I'm not sure if I really want to commit to them because they're bigger projects. So I already talked about this, I think last week, but I really love her Marley shawl, which is just two color brioche. Hi. Oh is just her two color brioche and um yeah because I really want to knit some brioche right now so uh, what what oh you want to play do you want to play do you want to play go get it <laughs> silly puppy she's just staring at it and she goes nope I don't want that So that's probably going to get cast on soon because I just really wanted some brioche. So there's that. Um, her So Faded sweater 
but I don't think I want to fade it. Um, I'm really inspired by Amy of the Stranded podcast who just did a light gray. I'm kind of really digging that. So I might just do the So Faded in one color because I really like the shape. Um, yeah, so there's that. And then the Weekender, which everybody's knitting, and I think it's the most gorgeous pullover. I just really like it. <sighs> so I want to cast on that. And then completely out of my comfort zone um, is her new rose cardigan. And I think I just want to knit it for the construction. And I don't know if I'd ever wear it. I'm also really curious about how much I would like sport weight sweaters because I think I would really really like them but yeah so you knit it side to side it has cable it's uh there's the cables on the band and it's faded which again I don't know if I would completely do part of me is thinking about finding a sport weight yarn um because my, the people that I get yarn from, the mill, they don't have a sport weight that I really like. So finding a sport weight that I really like and just dyeing, dyeing that and using it as um, a sample of what my yarn does, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. So, <laughs> yeah, but I just, I really, really love that sweater right now. And it's just, it's not me. I really like the sleeves and just how they're slouchy and cozy. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's one of those sweaters that I'd have to see in person. Well, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Um, yeah, but that's everything that I've been really thinking about lately. And let's see. What else is going on? Um nothing really i'm getting ready for my baby shower which is next weekend it's a week from tomorrow which is nuts um yeah it's crazy getting the nursery ready next week i'm staring that way because that's where the nursery is and the doors open so getting the nursery ready this next week and just knitting on a bunch of stuff Getting the website up and running is really, really, it's getting really important to me to have this done soon so I can have something to work on. Because um, I feel, I feel really, I feel the need to be productive right now. I don't know, and there's not really much I can do, like nursery-wise, until it's all painted. And the furniture's in there because, I mean, I can't lift things and I'm not allowed to paint <laughs> so um yeah so I can't do anything in there I need to get detergent so I can start washing things but I also am nervous about washing things because life <laughs> and um yeah so I'm getting nervous not nervous about it but I'm just still kind of in the mindset of stuff's gonna go wrong, even though I know it's not. I know it's not. Um, Esther, you're such a babe. Love her. Yeah, so, I don't know. I just really wanna do something, and dyeing yarn is really just kinda where my heart is at, and I would dye today, but it's so rainy, and um, again, my office, which is the nursery now, is where I would dry yarn. And so um, now it's location to dry is outside, but it's raining the rest of the day, so I can't really put that outside. <sighs> so I will have to wait until tomorrow or the day after to do that while Doug is moving furniture that I can't touch. <laughs> so, um, yeah. What yarns are you guys obsessing over? What is making you want to break your yarn diet what patterns are you obsessed with I don't know just let me know because I can't stop browsing Ravelry and I can't stop online dream shopping 
So <laughs> let me know. And yeah, so thank you so much for spending time with me. Thanks for letting me babble about nothing <laughs> for 40 minutes. And I will see you next week. Bye.